All right. It is two o'clock. I know I sent out a, a newsletter yesterday for all of my folks at uh, absentlaw.com. So if anyone is joining us today, right. thanks for doing that. I won't take too much time. This is something I've been thinking about for quite a while where I could just jump on and do a quick little tip and maybe answer some questions. So if you are in on YouTube and you want to leave a comment or or anything else or ask a question that maybe we can address, uh, please definitely feel free to do that. Uh, hoping to do this uh, every week, actually on Tuesdays as just part of a tip. Everybody likes a good tip. I love tips. I love when I learned something new that I didn't know before. So if this that's something that you are interested in, please uh, make sure that you put it on your calendar. I'm hoping to upgrade a little bit so that eventually I'll have a way that we can schedule this so that you can automatically add it to your calendar or something similar to that, and maybe even have some folks on uh, through using some of the software that, that um, is available. So welcome everybody, thanks for joining us today. So today's tip on iTip Tuesday, let me go ahead and share my screen. It is something that's probably one of my favorite tips of all time <laughs> in the sense that it's whenever I use my iPhone or my iPad, it is my favorite way or the easiest way that I know of to convert almost anything to a PDF on your iPhone or your iPad. I absolutely love this tip. And actually I've been doing this for a while there are several ways or have been several ways for a while now to convert something like a document to a PDF file on your iPad or on your iPhone. Probably one of my favorite methods has always been an actual app. Uh, this is from a company called Readle, R-E-A-D-D-L-E. Uh, I'm a big fan of this company. They make PDF Expert and Documents app and several others app, but one that they've had around for a very long time. They don't talk about it a whole lot, but it's still there and still available. <laughs> I wanna say it's $4 or $6. It's called PDF Converter. So just as the name implies, it can easily convert uh, files into PDF files. The only drawback that I've seen, it's not really a drawback, but it's the way that the app was designed. It's been around for a long time that you actually have to be accessing a document, like a Word document or something from a specific location, and then you, you can convert it. Now you can also do mail and the photos and stuff, but I just, I, I, I've i used it before, I still like it, but it's not the easiest way that I have found to be able to convert anything to a PDF file. So one of my favorite tips is something that can be done from almost any app, or frankly, any app that can be uh, that has access to the print function. So in order to show you this, let me do it from an email message. You know, many times we get emails, for example, and they, uh, they, they need to be archived or we want to convert them into a PDF so that we can save it with a client folder, right? Or in a client file somewhere, we want to be able to file that away as a PDF. Uh, get it out of the bar inbox and put it as a PDF. I do that quite often. And the way that I typically do that is I go into the mail app and you can do this from your Outlook app or Spark app or whatever app that you're using for mail. And you're basically gonna print this email message, <laughs> but we're not gonna print it to a physical paper. You're gonna print from the menu and you're gonna print to PDF. Now in the mail app and several other apps, some of the apps, uh, we have a share function, but in the mail app, there isn't a specific share function here. The way you get to the print option is by hitting the reply button down here in the bottom right corner here. So if I hit reply, it comes up with the obvious options, the reply, reply all forward. But if you scroll down here on this little box that pops up, you can see at the very bottom in mine, there is the print option. So when I tap on this, it comes up with the print dialog. And by the way, I just upgraded to iOS 15 yesterday on my iPad Pro here. And so this print dialog may look a little bit different because they improved the print dialog in iOS 15 or iPad OS 15, which is fantastic. Uh, you can see, you can pick a printer at the very top here. You can determine uh, how many copies that you want, double-sided, et cetera. But over on the left side is what I typically call the print preview. 
Uh, this used to be at the bottom of the print dialog box. Now it's over to the left side, but if you are still on uh, pre iOS, iPad OS 15, you'll see it at the bottom. This print preview is really neat because it tells you, first of all, how many pages that if you did print it out to a regular printer, how many pages it's going to be. So in this case, I got four from this one email. And you can go through and you can scroll up and down to see the pages. And you can even uh, uncheck a page if you don't want it to be printed, which I think is pretty handy as well. But another thing you can do is easily convert this email print to a PDF. And to do this, the very simplest way to do this is to take your finger and your thumb, and I'm going to place it on the little print preview. So I'm going to place it on the print preview, and then I'm going to spread my finger and thumb apart. So it's almost like pinch to zoom, but it's the opposite, unpinch <laughs> to zoom. Take your finger and thumb, put it on the print preview, and simply just spread your finger and thumb apart. And automatically here you have a PDF. There's the four pages that you can see the thumbnails over on the side there. And this has literally created a PDF file. Now what's great then is that you can send this PDF file to someone. You can email it to someone, for example. I'll tap the little share uh, icon in the upper right corner here. And you can see that I can mail this to somebody. I can send it as, uh, as, as attached to in, uh, a text message or as a text message. I can copy it to a different app. So if you use a doc management app like NetDocuments or something, you can say open into that app. Uh, or my favorite is I usually like to copy it to PDF Expert. That's my favorite app that I like to use with PDFs. So I can simply tap copy to PDF Expert, copies there. In fact, PDF Expert app will open. And now this app will be here available so that I can annotate it if I need to, you know, highlight some text or make some circles on there. So that's the easiest tip that I have. Let me show you quickly how to do it from a web browser. If I want to open up Safari and let's say that I found an article that either maybe I've read it right now, but I might want to uh, convert that to PDF so that I can highlight some text. If you open up the Safari browser and let me see if I've got a story here. Yeah, this is great. This is John Voorhees at Mac Stories. I uh, did a very good article on the Apple versus Epic or Epic versus Apple uh, decision here. But this is a great article. I want to save it because I'm like for research or something similar. So in order to do that, in this case, since I'm in the web browser, I'm going to tap the share button. It's the square with the arrow pointing out. And once I tap that, if I scroll down here, I do also have the print option. So remember, this is the print to PDF. So if I tap on print here, I get that same kind of similar dialog box. And you can see how many pages that I have over here. I simply will take my finger and my thumb, put it on that print preview and spread it apart. And voila, I've got a PDF here. Now, this is perfectly fine for like my research, for example, and I can open that in PDF Expert. Uh, but let me give you a quick bonus tip on this, especially if you're using Safari. If I tap done, it gets out of there and I can cancel that print job. In some cases, I want just the text of that article. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the reader mode on this story. You see in the upper uh, left corner there in that URL bar, if I tap and hold on that AA there, it immediately pops me into the reader mode. And I love the reader mode because it just takes out all the ads and everything and just gives me the text that I need. Well, in, as long as you're in reader mode, you can also tap the share button, go up to print, tap that. And if you look over on the left side now, that uh, page looks much, much better. In fact, I've got a few more pages because it just gave me the text without any of the advertisements or anything else. And if I take my finger and thumb, spread it apart there, I've got a PDF here now that I can open up in PDF Expert again. And if I need to, I can go in and I can highlight text or define it differently. So I hope that was helpful. That's my tip for this iTip Tuesday, a very quick way to convert almost anything to a PDF on your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, if you are upgrading to iOS 15, uh, won't go through these today, but I just wanted to give you a kind of some bullet points of my favorite um, uh, features with iOS 15. It just came out yesterday. So if you're a little leery about upgrading, that's fine. I typically tell people, wait at least a week. You don't need to have uh, anything. And you know that way you get some time. If, if nerds like me run into any problems, Apple will be able to fix it. But one of my favorite 
uh, features in iPad OS 15 is the Quick Notes. It doesn't work quite the same in the iPhone, but you can access it. I'll be talking about that quite a bit, probably in later uh, uh, episodes of iTip Tuesday. I do love the live text function, especially on my iPhone. I can take a picture of a sign and I can copy that text or take a picture of a document and copy the text there. It's absolutely fantastic. I've been playing a little bit with the Safari extensions, like especially for one password in there. Uh, I love the fact that, in fact, if you look here on my screen, you can now customize how your widgets look on the iPad, uh, which is wonderful. We were sort of limited before, so that's really nifty that we have some additional capabilities for uh, the way it looks. And then, <laughs> I know this is a small one, but I love the improved weather app on both the iPhone and the iPad. I just think that that's great. So if this was helpful, if you liked it, uh, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel here. You can also go to appsandlaw.com and subscribe to the newsletter there. Uh, and then also don't miss the In the News Weekly podcast. I do that with Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD, and we have a great time. Uh, we talk about all the newest, uh, latest and greatest within Apple and the news there. So again, thanks everybody for joining me today on App iTip Tuesday. We'll be back next Tuesday. And the best way to maybe kind of keep track of what's going on is to simply subscribe to appsandlaw.com. I send out a newsletter periodically. I don't spam anyone. It just It's there for some informational purposes. So thanks for joining me. Appreciate it.